The early racial theories of the 18th and 19th centuries gave rise to the historical debate about the race of ancient Egyptians, which was associated with models of racial hierarchy mostly based on anthropometry and craniometry. The history of the debate regarding the ancient Egyptian race will be covered in this video. Before continuing, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. Regarding the Egyptians' racial identity and the origins of their civilization, various points of view were put up. Some academics asserted that other Afrosiatic, speaking people in North Africa, the Horn of Africa, or the Middle East influenced ancient Egyptian culture, while others pointed to influences from other Nubian groups or populations in Europe. The idea that Egypt had a white or black society is rejected by mainstream scholars, who contend that despite the phenotypic diversity of both ancient and modern Egyptians, it is out of date to apply modern ideas of black or white races to ancient Egypt. The idea that ancient Egypt was racially homogeneous, which is implied in the black or white Egypt concept, is also rejected by scholars. Rather, the skin tones of the peoples of Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt, and Nubia, who in different periods rose to power in ancient Egypt, varied. Despite several foreign invasions throughout Egyptian history, mass immigration did not significantly alter the country's demography. Origins In a series of remarks he made about the racial makeup of the ancient Egyptians in the 18th century, Constantin Francois de Chasbouf, Comte de Volney stated that the Copts are the proper representatives of the ancient Egyptians because of their jaundiced and fumed skin, which is neither Greek, Negro or Arab, their full faces, their puffy eyes, their crushed noses, and their thick lips, the ancient Egyptians were true Negro the Sphinx, according to Volney, provided him with the solution to the puzzle of why every Egyptian he encountered throughout the nation had a bloated face, puffed, up eyes, flat nose, and thick lips, in other words, the real visage of the mulatto. He stated that although he was tempted to blame the weather, the Sphinx's appearance convinced him otherwise, seeing that head, typically Negro, in all its traits. By the practically uniform evidence of ancient Greek historians, the ancient Egyptians belonged to the African race, who established in Ethiopia, asserted Gaston Maspero, a 19th century French Egyptologist. According to ethnology, the Egyptians appear to comprise a third branch of the Caucasian race, and thus much can be regarded as certain, according to German Egyptologist Heinrich Karl Brush. According to 19th century British Egyptologist E. Dada, Wallace Budge, there are many aspects in the manners, customs, and religions of the historic Egyptians that suggest that their ancestors' original home was in a nation in the vicinity of Uganda and land of Punt. The idea that black people are historically, intellectually, and physically inferior to white people increased throughout the 19th century American struggle to abolish slavery escalating the discussion over the race of ancient Egyptians. For instance, John Campbell directly refuted Champollion and others' assertions regarding the evidence for a black Egypt in 1851, stating, There is one great difficulty, and to my mind an insurmountable one, which is that the advocates of the Negro civilization of Egypt do not attempt to account for how this civilization was lost. Egypt progressed, and why because it was Caucasian, as tensions rose toward the American Civil War, the discussion over slavery in the United States was overtly linked to claims about the race of Egyptians. To demonstrate that the Caucasian or white and the Negro races were different at a very remote age, and that the Egyptians were Caucasians, Josiah C. Not and George Glidden set out in 1854. Negroes were abundant in Egypt, but their social position in ancient times was the same as it is now in the United States, that of servants and slaves said physician and anatomy professor Samuel George Morton. Flinders Petrie, an Egyptology professor at the University of London in the early 20th century, also mentioned a black queen, Amos Nefertari, who was the divine ancestress of the XVIIth dynasty. The dark queen Amos Nefertari had an aquiline nose, long and narrow, and was of a type not in the least prognathous, he said of her appearance. The dynasty race idea of the ancient Egyptians was supported by Petri. He held that the master race of eastern invaders, specifically, those from Mesopotamia, were to blame for forcing civilization on the primitive and uneducated native Egyptians. Modern Scholarships 
The debate concerning the race of the ancient Egyptians has prompted a variety of responses from contemporary experts who have researched ancient Egyptian culture and demographic history. The Black Hypothesis and the Idea of a Homogeneous Population in Egypt put forth by Chaik Antadiop in his chapter Origins of the Ancient Egyptians, were met with profound and total disagreement by some scholars at the UNESCO Symposium on the Peopling of Ancient Egypt and the Deciphering of the Meroitic Script in Cairo in 1974. These scholars included Jean Verkuter and Serge Sonoran. Gunnar Diop's chapter was generally acknowledged as a painstakingly researched contribution, but it also resulted in a genuine lack of balance in the participants' discussions. Methodological problems, such as a lack of data to enable tentative conclusions to be reached about the peopling of ancient Egypt and the many phases through which it may have passed, were a major factor in the dispute. The prior theory that Egyptians were white with a dark, even black, coloring was also rejected by all of the participants. The UNESCO publication General History of Africa has justifications for each side, with the origin of the Egyptians chapter authored by Chaik Antadiop a supporter of the black hypothesis, which was completely rejected by one participant. Several attendees of the 1974 UNESCO conference came to the conclusion that the ancient Egyptian population was native to the Nile Valley and comprised individuals from both the north and south of the Sahara with a variety of skin tones. As human population genetics has developed since the late 20th century, the majority of biological anthropologists have come to reject the idea that race has any bearing on the study of human biology. In short, ancient Egypt, like modern Egypt, comprised of a fairly diversified people, wrote Frank J. Yurko in an article from 1989. He also stated in 1990 that it was improper to discuss black or white issues when referring to Egypt. It is anthropologically incorrect to transplant vocabulary from the United States onto Africa. They would have found this argument ludicrous, and that is something we could learn from," Yurko continued. We are applying a racial division to Egypt that they would never have accepted. The peoples of Egypt, Sudan, and much of North, East Africa are typically viewed as an ilotic continuity, with a vast variety of physical traits. According to Yurko's 1996 essay, complexions light to dark, various hair and craniofacial types, it is more than likely that the African strain, whether dark or light, predominates in the ancient Egyptian population, but it is impossible to tell with certainty at this point in our knowledge. According to Gamal Mokhtar, editor of the UNESCO General History of Africa, who said this in 1990, the Egyptians were not Nubians, and the earliest Nubians were not black, said Egyptologist Miriam Lichtheim in 1990. Black people left Central Africa and moved northward, turning Nubia gradually black. Academic Opinions on Egyptologists' Prejudice Numerous academics have emphasized the influence of colonial racism in forming the beliefs of the first Egyptologists and have criticized the field's persistent overrepresentation of North American and European viewpoints. In The African Origin of Civilization, Diop made the case that colonial attitudes and prejudice scholarship were to blame for the predominating views in Egyptology. According to Bruce Trigger, early modern study on the people of the Nile Valley was marred by a confusion of race, language, and culture and by an attendant racism. The ancient Egyptian civilization was inherently African, according to Christopher Arrett, who stated this in 1996. These African roots are evident in both language and culture. The southern regions of Egypt are where the Egyptian ethnicity has its roots. Current controversies. Today's debates over the racial makeup of the ancient Egyptians are troubled waters that the majority of authors who write about ancient Egypt from the mainstream of academia avoid. As a result, the discussion primarily occurs in public and tends to center on a select few particular concerns. Do you like this video? Give your response in our comments section below and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates.